African features and rhythms, low thorny forests, and the king of the beasts. All establish where we are. Or does it? Things here aren't as they seem. Peacocks are not found in Africa. And this isn't your familiar story of lions on the savannah. This is Leo Persica, the Asiatic lion. And we are in the Gir forests of Gujarat in western India. In their remarkable journey back from the brink of extinction, the lions of Gir have reclaimed lost territories and even colonized new habitat. This is the story of the fall and rise of the last lions of India. Meena Venkat comes from India's deep Dravidian south. She's completing her PhD on one of the world's rarest large predators. The lions have been here since time immemorial. The Siddhis, as they're called, came later to the gear, perhaps in the 18th century, with an East African princess who married the Nawab of Junagar, the local Indian ruler. The Asiatic lion is quite different from its African cousin. Physically, they have a distinctive fold of skin down their bellies, and the males have smaller manes. But the real difference is in how they organize their social lives. Where in Africa, prides are much larger and mixed, here in India, lions live in small female-run groups, mature males only joining briefly to mate. Once, the Asiatic lions stretched west across Asia as far as Greece. These were the lions that Androcles and Daniel faced, the lions of ancient Greece and the Bible. These are the same lions that the Romans set upon the Christians in the Colosseum, and these are the very last of that ancient race. Each morning, Mina and her trackers leave the small town of Sassani. They drive into the Gia forest. Mina is here to keep an intimate daily record of the shifting territories and fortunes of her study group. So tracking lions is sometimes very easy. And uh, sometimes it's quite frustrating. Now, there's a cheetah alarm call there. So there's one more lead. After many months in the field, Mina can now identify over 60 individuals by sight. Cheetah. Inevitably, she has her favorites. There's a line there. He's one of the kokra males that I track continuously and he's resting here for the day. I'm very fond of these two lions because they're first of all very good looking and uh, he's aggressive and uh, a wild uh, majestic male so I like him a lot. Just as we walked up now the male gave a low guru sort of warning that means he doesn't want us to uh, move further close to him. Uh, I do get frightened. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm worried. I'm not frightened, but I know anything can happen. The Kokura males are next in line to rule prime territory in the Gir. The Gir forests may seem vast, stretching for 1,412 square kilometers. 
but as the Kokura males will find out, competition here is intense. This can be a harsh land. In summer, it is desiccated and unforgiving. Now all must endure months of dusty uncertainty as temperatures climb to over 45 degrees. It's also a place of transformations. The annual rains bring a deluge that in a matter of weeks will turn the sepia landscape emerald green. Between these extremes, the gear plays a fickle host to one of the highest concentrations of carnivores in Asia. The gear has a very healthy population of leopards, but at less than half the weight of a lion, they're nervous. If caught on the ground, they'll be killed. Over 300 species of birds and 36 species of reptiles have made the gear their home. The gear is one of the last places left in Asia where semi-nomadic pastoralists still live in uneasy harmony with large predators, as all our ancestors once did. The Maldari have been here for centuries, grazing their herds beneath the noses of their large feline neighbours, returning each night to the safety of thorny stockades called nesses. They take their losses philosophically. Modern India encircles this timeless world. But despite the growing human population of India's billion citizens, it's here that one of the most remarkable conservation success stories is taking place. If the Kokura males are to establish their dominance, this is the opposition they have to face and overcome. Male Asiatic lions often form coalitions to patrol shared territory. Usually related, they join to hunt and unite to drive off rivals. One of the Kokura males gingerly approaches the ruling residence. He's deep in their territory, and it's a blatant challenge to their authority. These grizzled veterans have seen many territorial battles, but age is now beginning to show. The lone Kokura male decides to retreat. Two to one. The odds are not in his favour today, but he's young and can afford to wait. The veterans rule for another day. As well as the lions, the gear is divided into other territories. The Maldaris have strictly defined grazing areas associated with each nest, the home stockade. The Maldaris' lives revolve around the unchanging routines of taking their cattle and buffaloes out of the nest at first light, grazing and returning at dusk.
अवे अमर लोक थी आज हमारा हायर में घानी कई मात सरस्वती मीट मांडी ने ज्योति कोई दुलारो सत्यवास निर्भय निर्वेशनी It would be easy to romanticize the Maldari's world. But pastoralists and predators don't mix, as some Maldaris know from personal encounters with the lions. The Maldaris, cattle and buffalo have always formed a significant part of the lion's diet. Strict vegetarians, the Maldaris keep cattle solely for milk. If an animal is killed by the lions, it has no further value for them and is abandoned to the local carnivores. The kill is revisited by a hierarchy of scavengers until the male that made the kill returns to finish his meal. Late afternoon and the herdsmen start to call in their cattle and buffaloes. The nest is made secure in a scene unchanged in centuries. In the patriarchal world of the nest, roles and responsibilities are clearly demarcated. By contrast, the ridey pride is fairly typical of the matriarchal structure adopted by the gear lions. The group is led by an adult female and includes her eldest daughter, now two and a half years old. Below her are three younger cubs, two female and one male, now almost a year old. For now, the pride will depend on the lioness, supported by her eldest daughter, to make enough kills to sustain the whole family. Once inside the thorny walls, the cattle are safe. Lions don't often share kills with lionesses or even their own offspring. If the ridey pride is going to eat, they'll need to kill afresh. Their inexperience shows, especially on a full moon when the herds can see them coming a long way off.
February, and the earth dries out. March and high summer turns to drought. The king of the jungle drinks wherever it pleases, but the Maldari are forbidden to water their beasts at these troughs. Today, the gear lions enjoy considerable protection, getting what they need, if not on a plate, then on a very large concrete saucer. It's unusual to see males with cubs. Asiatic lions are not well known for their tolerance or paternal instincts. If the Kokura pair succeeds in deposing their territorial rivals, cubs like this will be in grave danger. With each regime change, infanticide is a brutal but effective way of bringing the neighbourhood females back into season and ensuring the new male's paternity. Today, the dangers the lions face are more from one another than from man. But until very recently, this was not always so. Shikari, or big game hunting, had always been a favourite pastime of India's ruling elite. But with British rule and the arrival of modern rifles, the slaughter of both tigers and lions accelerated and populations crashed. In 1900, the Nawab of Junagar invited Lord Curzon, the British Viceroy, here to his hunting lodge in the Gear. But when it was discovered that there were less than 20 animals left, Nawab and Viceroy decided that the time had come to try and save the few remaining animals. India's last lions had come within a cat's whisker of oblivion. Once protected, the lion's population grew steadily. <laughs> A 
A census is now held every five years to establish the latest figure. The Ridey Pride is found quarrelling in the undergrowth over a wild boar kill. Real aggression between siblings is rare and cordial relations soon return to the sisters. The young male, however, will have to leave the sorority once he reaches maturity. They will hunt together for at least another year. This is Junagar, the Nawab's old capital. Today, the man in charge is the conservator of forests, Bharat Patak. As field director for the gear, the lion's welfare is his prime responsibility, protecting large predators alongside large human and domestic animal populations is an almost impossible juggling act. But under Mr. Patak's management, the lion population has steadily grown. And as a result, there is a growing case to declare the gear a world heritage site. Our uh, current uh, estimate, uh, this uh, April 2005 estimate of lion population, is somewhere between 350 to 370. So officially it is 359 plus or minus 10 animals. That is the population. For a hundred years, Leo Persica has fought for its survival. But today it faces a new problem of not being too few, but of being too many. Territorial disputes between mature males are inevitable, but with lion numbers growing faster than lion habitat, conflicts are on the increase. Young and powerful, the Kokora males, as expected, have met and defeated their veteran rivals. With a characteristic grimace, one of the Kokora males tastes the odour of a female in season, using a special scent organ in the roof of his mouth. He is quick to claim the spoils of his victory. back it hit 46 degrees. It's a terribly hot summer day and uh, usually mating is rare during summer and uh, this is a rare event here. And, but the monsoon is approaching in another couple of weeks and from my observation mating happens throughout the year but there are peaks. Uh, usually the mating peak is during winter time. Amazingly her presence is tolerated 
even during mating, when males are at their most aggressive and unpredictable. I've been very much part of the lion family. I don't know how much they've accepted me, but so far I have good reason to believe that they've accepted me. Females will stay in estrus for four or so days, during which time the male doesn't leave, mating up to every 20 minutes. They'll not eat, and it's only when the female makes it absolutely clear she's had enough does copulation end and the couple separate again. Around 110 days after mating, the young are born. She'll normally give birth to two or three cubs. Today's question is, will there be enough room for everyone in the gear? Sharp teeth soon make suckling painful. The lioness is keen to introduce her young family to meat. In this case, another local Jafrabadi buffalo. After a few days marinating in the tandoori-like temperatures of high summer, the putrefying meat is tender enough even for the cubs. Lionesses can be ferociously protective, and Mina's choice of career has been the cause of some anxiety to friends and family, especially her own mother. Last year, my mother had visited me and we had taken her along. And, uh, and she, she was very uh, afraid because I was in this, uh, sitting like this, and uh, she felt that if a lion rushed and I was in a losing position and I couldn't get up and run away or something. So she, till that time she went, uh, you know, boarded the train and left. She said, don't do that, you know, at least you have to, you know, in a, be in a position where, you know, you can get up and scoot. <laughs> okay, it's uh, now around uh, 5.45. So around uh, 6, 6.30, this animal would probably get up, have a drink of water, and then uh, set out on a hunt. There she's about to get up. This is the first time Mina has observed the lion so closely by herself, without her usual team. And without my trackers today. The way she's stalking, it looks like uh, there's some animal at the water point. We'll just go. I think uh, she's gone uh, looking for a kill. I think we should uh, let her be and uh, hope that she makes a kill tonight.
as the cubs grow, their diet becomes increasingly carnivorous. But even now, as the lioness's teats show, her cubs are still suckling. Not all families here are as happy as this one. With lion numbers growing, the forestry department has been compensating Maldari families to relocate outside the gear with their cattle. The plan is to reduce the pressure on grazing and to allow the numbers of deer and antelope the lion's natural prey to increase. In the past, domestic livestock made up to 65% of the lion's diet. The figure has now fallen to around half that as the deer and antelope populations grow and lions return to wild kills. As the moon wanes, the advantage of surprise passes from prey to predator. The Nilgai's cries have attracted the resident male, who, invited or not, joins the feast. After consuming a fully grown female Nilgai, even the normally timid deer seem to know that the ridey pride are too full to hunt today. By the middle of May, the arrival of seasonal migrants and the start of nest building signals that the rains are imminent. According to local folklore, if the lapwings lay their eggs low in the riverbed, the rains will fail. The higher the ground they choose, the better the monsoon.
From mid-June to the end of September, storms deluge the land. On the high ground, the lapwings have got it right. For the deer and antelope, the monsoon means abundant grazing, but it also brings danger. The tall, thick grasses mean a lion can disappear and get far closer to its prey. Monsoon flush brings clouds of insects. For some, the flies are a torment. For others, they're a blessing. In times like these, even a crested hawk eagle is tempted to try the seasonal fare. As soon as the rains stop, the land starts drying out almost immediately. December comes, and it's harvest time for the Maldaris. <laughs> Women make hay. while the men celebrate their prowess as guardians of the precious herds. A tin can filled with stones is thought to make a roar like a lion, galvanizing the herd's defensive instincts. The highly traditional world of the Maldaris seems a timeless and unchanging part of the gear. But the number of Maldari families has more than halved in the last ten years, leaving more grazing for the lion's natural prey. Even so, the gear is not big enough for everybody. With the world's entire population of Leo Persica encircled by an ever-growing human presence, the risks are obvious. An outbreak of canine distemper, or rabies, is a potentially catastrophic possibility. One long-debated solution is to relocate a group of lions and create a second, separate population base. A site in central India has even been suggested and would see lions introduced back into tiger country. For the first time in five centuries, the world's two supercats would share habitat. 
With a 50 kilo weight advantage, a tiger could kill a lone lion. Would a small pride fare any better and actually stay? Could the plan work or ever justify the risks? While the pros and cons are debated this way and that, the lions have simply voted with their feet and increasingly are venturing further and further outside the national park. In this village on the periphery of the park, at least one or two cattle are lost every month to free-ranging lions. For millennia, Hinduism has taught Ahimsa. This tolerance and respect for life provides the clearest explanation of why the Asiatic lion, extinct everywhere else, is still found here in Mahatma Gandhi's home state of Gujarat. One of Meena's Kokura males has been operating on the edge of the park. I call this male an uh, angry young man because he's very aggressive. He's attacked quite often and we approach very cautiously. If you look at the census figures for the past 20 years, you will see that the lion population has steadily increased. And obviously with increase in population, you need more space. And the uh, gate has reached the, its carrying capacity. And that's why you're finding more animals straying out and dispersing and settling outside the gate protected area. The Kokura males may occasionally stray a few kilometers outside the gear's boundaries, but some lions have taken their search for food and territory much further afield. Thirty-five kilometers south of the gear, in a thin, thorny strip of acacia scrub, a small group of lions have created a home for themselves. Judging from the scats that you're finding, say every few meters, the lion is using this area quite well. And as you can see, the sea is not very far and uh, for a lion to survive in this sort of habitat is truly amazing. And amazingly, to get here at all, they've travelled across densely populated human settlement. The lions have been living off these large herds of antelope that have also established themselves along the coastal belt. They prey too on feral pigs. But when, inevitably, they take cattle, local pride in the lions turns to prejudice. And although rare, there have been recent cases of deliberate poisoning. The very success of the Asiatic lion is creating its own problems, as the GEAR's field director, Bharat Patak, acknowledges. Protecting the protected species in protected area is, is uh, comparatively easy. But protecting the protected species outside protected area, it's, it's a challenge. She's dead, but the doctor, we are awaiting the doctor, veterinary doctor, he come and confirm what went wrong. There are no external injuries, there is some internal problem. There is uh, so few uh, Asiatic uh, lions existing today, and each life is so precious. It's very sad to lose a female, a prime age female, and uh, she looks so healthy. So it would be uh, interesting to know what went wrong. The autopsy was inconclusive, but did reveal that the lioness was carrying unborn cubs. Mina goes in search of her mate, who cannot be far away. I've been studying the Asiatic lions for the past three and a half years, and I think that I know something. And then I come to the coastal habitat and I see the lions here and I'm really amazed because it's so close to people 
and the environment is so different. It just shows the surviving skills of the Asiatic lion. There's so much human activity around us, yet the lion is so unperturbed. While so many other large predators are losing their battle for existence, the population of the Asiatic lion is growing, regaining lost ground and even carving out new territories in challenging new habitats. An eccentric local spelling of lion sanctuary, painted on a freshwater trough, is proof that lions have not only found their way to the coast, but also into the hearts of the villages of Vadodara. But this has also been the Asiatic lion century. What has made their rare success story possible? Sustained efforts um, by uh, local people and by governments, uh, and, uh, and, and the cultural support, the, the local support. It continued throughout the century. Um, it has become a pride over a period of time that yes, uh, gear and uh, Asiatic land, they are the pride of the country. It's been a century since the Nawab and the Viceroy decided to spare the last of India's lions. Today, the future for the Ridey Pride, the Kokura males and the 350 or so other individuals finally look secure. On the trail of Tarka, Natural World is back same time next week following a family of wild otters in Devon. Up next on BBC Two, one of the most elusive of British mammals, the stoat. And following that, having to cope with the loss of a mother, touching stories, in my heart belongs to Dad. African features and rhythms, low thorny forests, and the king of the beasts, all establish where we are, or does it? Things here aren't as they seem. Peacocks are not found in Africa. And this isn't your familiar story of lions on the savannah. This is Leo Persica, the Asiatic lion. And we're in the Gir forests of Gujarat in western India. In their remarkable journey back from the brink of extinction, the lions of Gir have reclaimed lost territories and even colonized new habitat. This is the story of the fall and rise of the last lions of India. Meena Venkat comes from India's deep Dravidian south. She's completing her PhD on one of the world's rarest large predators. The lions have been here since time immemorial. The cities, as they're called, came later to the gear, perhaps in the 18th century, with an East African princess,
who married the Nawab of Junagar, the local Indian ruler. The Asiatic lion is quite different from its African cousin. Physically, they have a distinctive fold of skin down their bellies, and the males have smaller manes. But the real difference is in how they organize their social lives. Where in Africa, prides are much larger and mixed, here in India, lions live in small female-run groups, mature males only joining briefly to mate. Once, the Asiatic lions stretched west across Asia as far as Greece. These were the lions that Androcles and Daniel faced, the lions of ancient Greece and the Bible. These are the same lions that the Romans set upon the Christians in the Colosseum, and these are the very last of that ancient race. Each morning, Mina and her trackers leave the small town of Sassani. They drive into the Gia forest. Mina is here to keep an intimate daily record of the shifting territories and fortunes of her study group. So tracking lions is sometimes very easy. And uh, sometimes it's quite frustrating. Now, there's a cheetal alarm call there. So there's one more lead. After many months in the field, Mina can now identify over 60 individuals by sight. Cheetal. Inevitably, she has her favorites. There's a line there. He's one of the Kokra males that I track continuously and he's resting here for the day. I'm very fond of these two lions because they're first of all very good looking and uh, he's aggressive and uh, a wild uh, majestic male so I like him a lot. Just as we walked up now the male gave a low guru sort of warning that means he doesn't want us to uh, move further close to him. Uh, I do get frightened. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm worried. I'm not frightened, but I know anything can happen. The Kokura males are next in line to rule prime territory in the Gear. The Gear forests may seem vast, stretching for 1,412 square kilometers. But as the Kokura males will find out, competition here is intense. This can be a harsh land. In summer, it is desiccated and unforgiving. Now all must endure months of dusty uncertainty as temperatures climb to over 45 degrees. It's also a place of transformations. The annual rains bring a deluge that in a matter of weeks will turn the sepia landscape emerald green. Between these extremes, the gear plays a fickle host to one of the highest concentrations of carnivores in Asia. The gear has a very healthy population of leopards but at less than half the weight of a lion, they're nervous. If caught on the ground, they'll be killed. Over 300 species of birds and 36 species of reptiles have made the gear their home. The gear 
is one of the last places left in Asia where semi-nomadic pastoralists still live in uneasy harmony with large predators, as all our ancestors once did. The Maldari have been here for centuries, grazing their herds beneath the noses of their large feline neighbors, returning each night to the safety of thorny stockades called nesses. They take their losses philosophically. Modern India encircles this timeless world. But despite the growing human population of India's billion citizens, it's here that one of the most remarkable conservation success stories is taking place. If the Kokara males are to establish their dominance, this is the opposition they have to face and overcome. Male Asiatic lions often form coalitions to patrol shared territory. Usually related, they join to hunt and unite to drive off rivals. One of the Kokura males gingerly approaches the ruling residents. He's deep in their territory, and it's a blatant challenge to their authority. These grizzled veterans have seen many territorial battles, but age is now beginning to show. The lone Kokura male decides to retreat. Two to one. The odds are not in his favor today, but he's young and can afford to wait. The veterans rule for another day. As well as the lions, the gear is divided into other territories. The Maldaris have strictly defined grazing areas associated with each ness, the home stockade. The Maldaris' lives revolve around the unchanging routines of taking their cattle and buffaloes out of the nest at first light, grazing and returning at dusk. It would be easy to romanticize the Maldari's world. But pastoralists and predators don't mix, as some Maldaris know from personal encounters with the lions. The Maldari's cattle and buffalo have always formed a significant part of the lion's diet. Strict vegetarians, the Maldari's keep cattle solely for milk. If an animal is killed by the lions, it has no further value for them and is abandoned to the local carnivores.
The kill is revisited by a hierarchy of scavengers until the male that made the kill returns to finish his meal. <laughs>